So today's lesson is about the biodiversity of two lawns and how you measure the biodiversity of two different lawns. Um, I find this quite difficult to teach virtually because usually I would go outside with the quadrats, with the tape measures, with the identification key and actually physically count the percentage cover of the plants. However, I'll give it a try. So, you should be able to explain how quadrets are used to collect data, explain what random sampling is, and hopefully you would be able to collect valid data, analyse your results and construct an appropriate graph, and hopefully you would be able to suggest possible reasons for the patterns in your results. So what I would usually do is go out and look at a field, which doesn't have any weeds on, and then I would look at that and that's been treated with weed killer. And then I would look like a, a more natural kind of field where you should see daisies and buttercups, etc. And I would compare the species distribution of two different lawns. So there are two types of sampling methods. There's either the random, random sampling, where you get a set of random numbers generated by a computer, so a random number grid, and you would use the coordinates as a grid. And then you would mark out a similar grid on the lawn, and you would put the quadrat at random coordinates. It's a bit like plotting a graph, really. Um, you know, if the coordinates said 9, 8, you would go 9 on the x-axis, or nine meters that way, and eight on the y-axis, eight meters that way, and then drop your quadrat wherever they meet. And then there's also systematic sampling, which I'll go through next lesson, which is usually transects. And this is where you would use it, you would measure it at regular intervals, but both random and simple systematic sampling are all to do with avoiding bias in placing the quadrats because if not you could just think oh there's loads of daisies over there I'll just go and place my quadrat there but that's not really a fair representation of what the field actually is like um so yeah as I said not all parts of the area being sampled are the same some of them might be wetter the soil might be boggier than others some of it might be in the shade uh, some of it might have more animal presence, birds on the grass. It really just depends where it is as to what the cover might be like. So a lawn may have some patches full of clover where it's damper and then some that are almost clover free where it's a bit drier. So if you place the quadrets randomly, you get more valid results. So as I said before, random sampling is where you get a set of random numbers which are generated by a computer. The numbers are used as coordinates on a grid. You mark out a similar grid on the lawn and the quadrant will be dropped at the random coordinates. And it's all about avoiding bias in placing the quadrats. So here is a quadrat. Um, so usually 10 by 10 grid. That would usually be a metre by a metre. Um, and then you would count the percentage cover of each species of plant. So obviously, if a square is covered in that particular plant, that would be 1%. Obviously, this one is just 100% covered with grass because all 100 squares are full of grass. So um, here is my random number generator table that I just got off the internet randomly. Um, so for this one, you could say use these first two columns as your coordinates. So you'd go 2.8 along the x-axis, 3.6 along the y-axis, and then you drop your, quad, quad, uh, your quadrat where they meet. And then for the next one, you just put a decimal in the middle and go 8.1 on your x-axis, 1.4 on the y-axis. Next one, 1.3 on the x Four and the Y, where did they meet? Drop your quadrat. So you're basically just plotting a massive graph on the lawn. You lay out your tape measure 10 metres that way, 10 metres that way, and then you're dropping your quadrats wherever these meet. So what I would say is one of the if you work in pairs, one of the pairs does the X coordinate, one of the pairs does the Y coordinate, and then wherever you meet is where you drop your quadrat. So the next person you would walk 7.6 along the X axis meters. 
the next one, the other partner would work, walk 5.8 along the y-axis and then you'd be in the middle and drop your quadrat, and so on. So once you've dropped your quadrat, you can then measure the percentage cover of that particular species. So here I've got a, a one metre by one metre grid. So each one of these is 1%. What I would say is use, if there's the square is full or it's half or more full, then count it. If it's less than half, then don't count it. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So there's 45 of those squares are covered, so it's 45%. So that was quite an easy one because it is a 10 by 10 grid, but in the exam question, you might not give a, be given a 10 by 10 grid and it might not be one metre by one metre. So you have to really read the data in the question carefully. So here's one that's not 100 squares. This one's a five by five grid. Um, so what you'd have to do is times it by four to get 100 squares, because at the moment you've only got 25. Um, so again, we'll count the, the species A is what we're looking at. So just species A. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, sorry again. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine squares. Um, so that means there's only nine out of the 25 squares that are covered. So um, if you times it by four, you can find how many there are per 100 squares. So that means there is 36% for species A. Okay, so now looking at the required practical, just a bit of a recap on what the definition of population is. A population is a group of organisms of one species living in a habitat. So scientists often want to estimate the size of a population, and this might involve sampling using a square frame called a quadrat. So the required practical title is investigating the population size of a species in a habitat. So the method would be place a quadrat on the ground at random using a random number generator or table as coordinates. Then you would estimate the percentage cover of plants of one species in the quadrat. Repeat this process a large number of times. That comes up a lot that you have to do it quite a few times. A large number of times and work out the mean number. Work out the mean number of plants in one meter squared. Then you measure the area of the whole habitat and multiply the number of plants in one metre squared by the whole area. So the independent variable is the part of the field that you're measuring. Control variable um, is the same size quadrat, and then your dependent variable is the percentage cover of the species of plant in the quadrat. Um, just as a little note, the more samples that are taken, the more accurate the estimate should be. And hazards and risk, you should always wash your hands after ecology work in a habitat. So as a worked example, uh, this is actually a past exam question. So some students investigated the size of a population of dandelion plants in a field. The diagram on the left shows the field. Um, the students placed a one metre by one metre square quadrat at 10 random positions in the field. Then they counted the number of dandelion plants in each quadrat. The table on the right shows the students' results. OK, estimate the total number of dandelion plants in the field. Calculate your answer using information from the diagram and the table above. Give your answer in standard form. So the total number of plants equals, and it's worth five marks. So the first thing is you need to find out 
your mean number because here you've got 10 quadrats you need to find out the mean number so you'd add all these together and divide them by 10 so if you do that add 6 9 plus 9 plus 5 plus 8 plus 0 plus 10 plus 2 plus 1 plus 8 plus 11 and you divide it by 10 the answer you come up with is 6 so the mean is 6 then what you're going to have to do is find the area of the field so i split it into two bits so I measured this rectangle, so 150 by 300, so 150 times 300, and then 100 times 100, and I added them, added them together. So I did 300 times 150 and 100 times 100, which is 45,000 plus 10,000 equals 55,000. So the area of the field, the total area is 55,000 metres squared. So... You then need to find how many, um, whatever species, uh, what is it, dandelions there are in the whole field. Because currently we know there's six in one metre squared, but we want to know how many there are in 55,000 metres squared. So you just times the mean by the area, so six times 55,000. The answer you get is 330,000. But it says, give your answer in standard form. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it'd be 3.3 times 10 to the power of 5. And that's your answer. So things to look out for in questions are definitely, what size quadrat is it? Make sure you calculate the area of the field correctly and also if there is anything extra like give your answer in standard form if it's two significant figures they come up quite a lot at the end of questions and people quite often forget to put them up ah. okay just a, a note that we've done percentage cover today but you could also be given um a question that asks you to count, just literally count the number in a certain area. So here, um, anything that is more than half off, you wouldn't count. So it's one, two, three. That's in one, two, three, four, five. That's in a 25 centimetre grid, a uh, 25 grid, square grid. So there's three and 25. So you'd have to times it by four to find out how many there are by 100. So three by four, four. Um, just a few other good videos to watch, which um, there's a few real life examples uh, where people actually go out into the fields and do it might be quite good to watch. Um, so next lesson, we're going to do transect, which is systematic sampling and succession.